Brenner was best known for his portrayals of Ramses II in the 1956 Cecil B. DeMille blockbuster The Ten Commandments and of King Mongoot of Siam in the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical The King and I, for which he won two Tony Awards and an Academy Award for the film version. He played the role 4,625 times on stage. He portrayed General Bunin in the 1956 film Anastasia and the gunman Chris Adams in The Magnificent Seven. Brenner was noted for his distinctive voice and his shaved head, which was very uncommon for the time, and he maintained it as a personal trademark long after adopting it in 1951 for his role in The King and I. Earlier, he was a model and television director, and later a photographer and the author of two books. Now, Ewell Brenner was born Yuli Borisovich Briner in 1920, and he exaggerated his background in early life for the press, which was not uncommon for the time claiming he was born Taiji Khan of part Mongol parentage on the Russian island of Sakhalin. In reality, he was born at home in a four-story residence in Vladivostok in the Far Eastern Republic of Russia. Brenner's mother came from Russian intelligentsia and studied to be an actress and a singer. In 1940, speaking little English, he and his mother emigrated to the United States aboard the President Cleveland arriving in New York City on October 25, 1940, where his sister already lived. During World War II, Brenner worked as a French-speaking radio announcer and commentator for the U.S. Office of War Information, broadcasting propaganda to occupied France. At the same time, he studied acting in Connecticut with the Russian teacher Mikhail Chekhov. Brenner's first Broadway performance was a small part in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night in December of 1941. He found little acting work during the next few years, but among other acting stints, he co-starred in 1946 in the production of A Lute Song with Mary Martin, and he also did some modeling work. His most famous role was that of King Mongoot in The King and I, and he appeared in the original 1951 production and later touring productions, as well as a 1977 Broadway revival, a London production in 1979, and another Broadway revival in 1985. He won Tony Awards for both the first and the last of these Broadway productions. He also appeared in the 1956 film version, for which he won an Academy Award as Best Actor, and in Anna and the King, a short-lived TV version on CBS in 1972. Brenner is only one of eight people who have won both a Tony and an Academy Award for the same role. Ewell was extremely moved by a visit to a refugee camp. This experience prompted him to immediately accept an offer to serve as special consultant to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. During his tenure, Brenner toured several refugee camps in Europe, the Middle and Far East, documenting his experiences. Director and performer, Brenner was an active photographer and wrote two books. His daughter Victoria put together Ewell Brenner Photographer, a collection of his photographs of family, friends, and fellow actors, as well as those he took while serving as a UN Special Consultant on Refugees. Brenner wrote Bring Forth the Children, a journey to the forgotten people of Europe and the Middle East in 1960 with photographs by himself and Magnum photographer Inge Morath. And he also wrote the Ewell Brenner Cookbook, Food Fit for the King and You, in 1983. In his early period in Europe, he often played and sang gypsy songs in Parisian nightclubs and sang some of the same songs in the film The Brothers Karmazov. In 1967, he released a record album, The Gypsy and I, Ewell Brenner Sings Gypsy Songs. Nine months before his death, the tour reached New York for a farewell Broadway run. Aware he was dying, he gave an interview on Good Morning America discussing the dangers of smoking and expressing his desire to make an anti-smoking commercial. The Broadway production of The King and I ran from January 7th to June 30th of that year with Mary Beth Peel as Anna. His last performance marked the 4,625th time he had played the role of the king. Meanwhile, the American Cancer Society and he created a public service announcement using the clip from the Good Morning America interview. and his ashes buried in a remote part of France, on the grounds of the Abbey of saint michel de bois Abri, a short distance outside the village of Luzet. He remains one of the most fascinating, unusual, and beloved actors of his time. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I hope you enjoyed another episode of Life and Times. I'm Warren McDonald's, and I hope you enjoyed today's profile on Ewell Brenner. Good day.